These are the 6.7 notes for trig. Today we're going to be talking about finding information from an equation. So we have our two equations on the left hand side here. Y equals A sine of BX plus C and then the same exact equation but with a cosine. So given these two equations, we're going to make sure that we are able to find the amplitude, period, and midline. So the amplitude All you have to do is look at the A value. Whatever the A is, that's going to be our amplitude. Remember, amplitude is how tall the graph is, the height of the graph from the midline. In order to find the period, we are going to take 2 pi, and if you remember, 2 pi is the same as 360 degrees. So that represents one cycle around the unit circle. We'll divide that by whatever the letter B is. Now notice how B is in front of the X. So the X is not part of the B. B will be the number in front of the X. And then the midline is the C value, the number at the very end. There's a plus here in the equation, but of course that could be a minus if the midline is at negative. All right, let's do a few practice problems here. The directions say find the amplitude, period, and midline for each function. The amplitude and the midline are going to be pretty simple because we're just looking at the letters. The period, because it has this part of equation 2 pi over b, that's going to take just a little bit of work. So example number 1, y equals 3 sine of 2x minus 5. So our a is 3. That's our amplitude. Period. I know the B is 2. So what I'll need to do is use this little equation, 2 pi over B, to find the answer for the period. So 2 pi divided by the letter B, which for this example would be 2. And then you do whatever math you need to do. So sometimes that's going to be canceling. Sometimes that'll be dividing. Other times reducing. This time the twos cancel out, and I'm left with an answer of pi. So the period is pi. Midline would be this letter C. Notice how it's a minus 5, so the midline will be y equals negative 5. Example number 2. For my amplitude A, notice there is no number in front of cosine, which means there is an invisible 1. Amplitude is 1. For the period, I do 2 pi divided by the letter b. So this time, b is 6 pi. So b is everything in front of the x. So on this first example, we just had a number 2. This time, we have a 6 pi. That all counts as b. So I'm going to divide by 6 pi. The pi's are going to cancel. And then the fraction 2 6 can be reduced. 2 6 reduces to 1 third. So the period is 1 third. Midline is the last number C. So Y equals 4. Example 3. Amplitude, letter A, 7. Period. Notice the X here. There's no number in front. So just like before, there's an invisible 1. Anytime you have a number missing in front, it's always going to be 1. Because 1 multiplied by something gives us that same thing. So I do 2 pi divided by the letter B, which is 1. And that would give me 2 pi. C is the number at the end, minus 7. So we'll write that as y equals negative 7 for the midline. All right, for example number 4, take 30 seconds and see if you can fill in those three pieces of information.
All right, our amplitude should be one. Period, two pi over, and then you're pulling the number in front of the x, whatever is in front of the x. So just the pi here. Cancel out the pi's, and we're just left with two. And then c is that one, positive one at the end, so y equals one. So let's make a little note off to the side. If there's no a in front, that means a is one. If there's no b, that means b is one. Now, if there happens to be no c, then you're gonna actually have c as zero. Because a number at the end is a positive or a negative, it's a plus or minus. So adding or subtracting zero would be the same as not having a value there. So no A, use one, no B, use one, but no C, make sure you use zero. Because I probably didn't need that in front part. We'll erase that. Okay. All right, let's move on to the back side. We have some more of the same thing here, except this time we're just going to focus on the period. The amplitude and midline tend to be pretty easy because all you have to do is look at the A and the C. Sometimes the period gets a little tricky. So our question for the back side, the top, is how do I deal with fractions? So example five, determine the period. So just the period here, which is going to be our 2 pi divided by B. So we're going to take the number b, the, what's in front of the x. Now, if you notice here, this x is kind of part of the equation. It's the same thing as having this as 1 half x. A lot of times, they'll write the x in the numerator and then get rid of that 1. But 1 half x is the same as x over 2. So this is going to be the b. So because b is a fraction, so when b is a fraction, you're going to need to write the, ne the 2b and the fraction next to each other. So right next to each other. And use this old school division sign. So instead of writing 2b over pi, we write 2b divided by, sorry, divided by b. So this works if you have a whole number, but if you have fractions, you want to use this one. All right, so we're going to do 2 pi divided by b, which is 1 half, all right? So that's what I mean by write them next to each other and use that division sign. <clears throat> then in order to divide fractions, you flip the second fraction and multiply. So 2 pi is not a fraction, but I'm going to make it into a fraction by putting a 1 underneath it. And I'm going to flip the second fraction, the 1 half, and change this to a multiplication. So 1 half becomes 2 over 1. And then when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. No need for common denominators. No need for common denominators. 4 pi over 1, which gets us 4 pi. So a little bit more work here, which is why we're doing a couple practice problems. Let's look at example number six. <clears throat> Notice your 8x over 3. So you want to think about that as 8 thirds x. And right? you want to take the 8 thirds as the b. 8 thirds as the b. So 2 pi over 1 divided by... 8 over 3, we'll flip the second fraction, and we'll multiply. At this point, you can use any skills that you have from fractions. So if you want to reduce or cross-cancel here, you're more than welcome to do that. So if you notice, the 2 and the 8, both of those are divisible by 2. You can divide that out right now. 
or you can wait until the end to reduce. So I'll show you here just going across the top and bottom, multiplying. And then notice you have 6 eighths, which is divisible by 2. And I'll reduce that to get 3 pi over 4. If you would wanted to cancel the 2 and the 8, you would have said, OK, both of those can be divided by 2, which would give me 1 and 4. And then notice you would have skipped right to your final answer. Whatever you're more comfortable is what I would like you to do. All right, example number seven. Let's see, we've got three pi x over seven. We wanna separate that x out. So three pi over seven and then put the x right there. You only want the, the ones in front of the x here to be the b. So never include the x as part of the b. 2 pi over 1 divided by 3 pi over 7. Flip the second fraction. And again, if you notice anything that cross cancels here, you can go ahead. I notice here that the pi's are going to cancel out. So I'm going to do that right away. You could also wait until the end and cancel the pi's once they're one on top of the other. Multiply across the top, 14, and multiply across the bottom to make 3. That does not reduce or divide evenly, so I'll just go ahead and leave it 14 over 3. All right. Now the last thing we're going to do today is finding the maximum and minimum of these functions. So this is just going to represent how high and how low the wave goes. So envision in your head this wave, right? It goes up and it goes down. So we're trying to find the top of that wave, how high it goes, and the bottom of the wave, how low it goes. And what that's going to depend on is your midline, right, where this is, and then your amplitude, how tall it is. So for example number eight, I want to identify the midline first. The midline is seven. So if you think about it, that has a that line would be 7 right there. And then the amplitude is 2, which means it goes 2 up as well as 2 down. The top of the wave is 2 higher. The bottom of the wave is 2 lower. So if they want to know the minimum, 2 down from 7, that would be 5. And then 2 up from 7 that would be 9. So if you can visualize that, you can use that method. Just kind of think about where the midline is and then going up and down from there. If that's not something that you liked or understood very well, you could also do it like this, a more mathematical way. To do the minimum, you would take the midline and you would subtract the amplitude. So 7 minus 2 midline minus the amplitude. And for the max, you would do the midline plus the amplitude. So 7 plus 2. So whichever way you feel better and more confident about it, you can do it that way. Let's look at example number 9. I identify the midline first. y equals negative 4. Remember, your midline is always your c value. And then the amplitude, what's in front, if you remember from the front page, amplitude, if there's nothing in front, is a 1. So if you envision those numbers now as being at negative 4, you're going to go 1 down and 1 up. So that would put you at negative 5 and negative 3. So negative 5 is going to be your minimum. And negative 3 is going to be your maximum. If you prefer the other method, you could do your midline minus your amplitude and your midline plus your amplitude. All 
For the last one here, we have a negative in front of the amplitude. So I put a little question over to the side. What do I do with a negative in front of A? So a negative in front of A is actually going to take our graph and it's going to flip it. So your graph is gonna end up upside down. However, we're not graphing these quite yet. So for the moment, we just want to ignore the negative for now. Uh, ignore the negative A for now. So we can just ignore the negative in front of the A. So here I wanna focus just on the three. That's the negative that I can ignore for right now. Once we start graphing it, we'll have to pull it back into the problem and deal with it, but it doesn't make a difference for our maximum and our minimum, because remember, the wave just continues up, down, up, down. So even if you flip it, you're still gonna have that same wave height. Midline, one, all right, y equals one. And then since the amplitude is three, again, we don't care about the negative, go three below the net, the one, all right, so. Here's three, sorry, here's one. You're gonna go three down and three up. Again, if you can visualize that in your head, you can do it that way. Clear that up a little bit. So negative two and four. If you like the more mathematical way, you take the midline minus the amplitude and the midline plus the amplitude.